everyone, and welcome to MPU Live for March 25th, 2020. Tim, it's Wednesday. Yes, thank you for reminding me. And I'm Carrie Rodriguez. You are? Tim Langan. Uh, we start off with a reminder because as the days go by, um, I don't know, parents need that reminder of what day it is. That's right. What the day of the month it is. That's right. Uh, as the days go by here. It's a blur. Quarantine. That's right. But, it's a blur. Uh, once again, good morning to everyone across the nation. Yeah. Uh, we're so excited to be with you for another morning uh, where we stop, give some news, some information, a little yep. centering, yep. a little levity, because uh, Lord knows we need it to yep. make and it through we... another day of quarantine. Yeah. And again, we're one of apparently uh, millions of people right now <laughs> broadcasting our lives on Facebook Live. Um, I have at least uh, three friends who are proud of their guitar skills. Uh, I myself like to promote every box I open on Facebook Live. That's right. Everyone's um, even driving around in their car Facebook Living. So if there are some technical difficulties <laughs> or the show uh, shuts down, um, it's because um, everyone is now on Facebook Live. So not only now can you read everyone's thoughts on social media, you now have to hear and see them as well. And you know what? I, I, you can't really fault folks. No. People, uh, what do you do? Really are seeking connection right now. Um, they want to be able to see folks' faces. They yep. want to share how they're feeling. I think we kind of sometimes just kind of take for granted, you know, that that human interaction. Even, you know, we we went for our walk around the block. We did, and um, you know, just seeing people out, I was like, oh, hi, well, look, person. look, there's a person. There's a person. Get away from me. Get away from me. Can you trust me? But hey, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, it's there's conflicting feelings happening. Yep. Um, but we're glad that you're with us virtually. Um, and, you know, certainly uh, appreciate everybody, this growing audience where we're reaching thousands and thousands of parents across the nation, uh, looking to find connection and resources and just a little humanity in the morning. So uh, we're glad you're here today. That's right. And I, and I think we, I think we need that humanity um, just in some, some news today. If I can get started, if you get don't mind. Get started. Jump right into um, it. You know, hopefully, apparently, we'll be back. We'll, we'll, we'll be back and out of this by Easter. Yes. Did you hear? Uh, another rough uh, press conference from President Donald Trump yesterday where he uh, was saying it would be great to have the economy up and running. Uh, packed churches by April 12th, uh, which is Easter. That's great. Um, unfortunately, that message conflicting with every major uh, everyone else actually. Yeah, everyone else, uh, literally on the planet, including um, the Pope and the Easter Bunny. Yeah, um, yeah, the Pope is not even having mass on Easter Sunday uh, because of COVID nineteen. But um, Donald Trump, I don't know. There you um, go. You know, we're we're being a little cavalier about that. So I, I do want to. I do just. I, I, I have to say, uh, follow your governor's advice. Yes. Um, unfortunately, in this moment, you know, the leadership we're seeing nationally, um, you know, it's. Yeah, stay I, I home. I don't even know what to say about it. Just stay in your home. Um, right now, you know, Donald Trump talking about reopening the government, reopening society, reopening businesses. Um, the issue being with that is that um, the federal government actually hasn't shut anything down, so right. they really don't have the power to reopen anything. Right. Uh, governors, by the grace of God, are uh, following the advice of experts, yep. uh, doctors, right. researchers, um, those who are experts in epidemics, pandemics. Uh, which are different things. We they are, are learning. They are. Uh, we're getting a whole new education. Things that I never thought I would ever need to. We're know. on the big one now, right? Yes, we're on. The epidemic is smaller than pandemic. The epidemic is when um, you know you have disease that is kind of confined to yep, one yep, country. Yep. You can close a border. Experts can come in yep. and assist to kind of keep it isolated. Pandemic is when you kind of get past that point and it explodes and right. it's, you it makes no sense to right. close borders. And unfortunately, that's where um, we're at. That's where we're at. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so all of that to say, um, my advice, uh, what I will be doing anyway, uh, because, you know, we're yeah. all just kind of trying to do the best we can. Right. Follow the advice of your governor right. um, and make sure uh, you're taking a look at what the CDC is saying, yeah. what the World Health Organization is saying, um, because we really need to avoid politics in this situation yes. um, and start listening um to folks, you know, who are on the ground level, what they're seeing. Frankly, um, Tim, I don't know about you, but, you know, in watching uh, CNN and MSNBC, you know, there's been a lot of focus on New York. Yeah. There's been a lot of focus on California. Yeah. Um, 
Well, like I was just listening yet last night about yeah. New Orleans. What's happening? So there. we were actually in New Orleans, um, and this is this is a perfect example here. We were actually in New Orleans in January, and you were for the National Parents Union convening, and you remember how crowded those streets are on a on a Monday afternoon. It's like a Saturday night. That's how crowded the streets are. Packed. Packed. Absolutely. They are packed. Um, and to think that people knew about this virus in January, knew it was possible, and then they still let festivals go on in Mardi Gras right. because people didn't know. And um, it's so I like to bang there when I talk. Yeah. Don't, don't bang the table. Don't bang the table. <laughs> Change the camera. But um, so fired up. But and, and that that caused the spread. So right now, the highest uh, per capita rate of infection is actually in New Orleans, in that area specifically following the Mardi Gras festival. And what is so um, frightening about that is that um, in New Orleans, even the, the biggest health care system there is almost at capacity by the end of next week, they are predicted to be at capacity for That's hospital right. beds. Um, and, and when you think of New Orleans and you think of Mardi Gras, you, you think of folks traveling in for a vacation yep. and then traveling home. Yep. Um, so again, that is how viral transmission happens. That's as right. we know with this virus, you don't have to be on top of somebody. You don't have to sneeze nope. on somebody. It's literally just, you know, we shed virus. What was the word? Being but, uh, in someone's presence. Shedding virus. Yeah. Shedding, shedding virus. And you can literally just be like this close to someone yep. walking across the street yep. and, and catch it that way. Right. So, um, again, all of this to say, um, we have to, you know, thankfully, you know, in governor Cuomo in New York, um, Gavin Newsom in California, um, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of excellent state leadership happening yes. um, here in Massachusetts. Charlie Baker, finally, after pressure from a lot of local officials, um, acquiescing and closing the state down. Right. It take a little effort yeah. here. Um, but listening and relying on the guidance of right. health professionals. And that's what we have to do right now. We cannot bring politics into this. Nope. And what professionals are telling us right now is stay at home. Stay at home. Do not go out. No play dates. No playgrounds. Nope. Um, no just for a minute. Nope. Stay at home as much as you possibly can. Um, it's critically important. And, um, you know, it's, it's just funny. This is a great segue to... Um, you know, we're going to get into the news and what's being negotiated yep. in Washington. But we also want to address the fact that um, we're seeing some unusual people actually testing positive for COVID-19. Right. Prince Charles. Prince Charles. Prince Charles. How did he get shocker. it? That was a shocker. How did he get it? How, how are some of these people getting it who are not just walking around the, the, the general population? Yeah. And then you, you wonder, OK, if Prince Charles has it, who basically lives a life isolated in, in isolation because <laughs> right. he's a prince right he's second in line right he's not walking down the street yeah um oh my goodness like how did he come in contact right. with the virus and then who around him um we hear that he has it but you know you'd have that would indicate that you know his staff has other it, people like have it spreading through so you know we're we're curious about that um thankfully we're hearing that he has mild symptoms um you know and not that it's you know life and death that it's so it's more important because prince charles has has it you know it's right it's it's, it's more just, of, it's, it's it's to show that like how easily it can spread infect. but even he can get it yeah and um one of the the striking um groups of folks that we're hearing um are unfortunately testing positive for covid 19 dancers in new york really on broadway um, yes, there's kind of a flash of um, positive tests coming through there. You know, New York right now in the country, one of the epicenters of the, right. the pandemic. Um, so it makes sense. Frankly, there are just so many people who are testing positive in New yep. York, period. But um, in that particular community, um, you know, it's stunning. And in New York, um, you know, just thinking about it, four out of 10 Latinos in New York have lost their jobs as the, re as the result of the epidemic. And when you think about the population of New York... Yep. Um, that is huge. I mean, um, I, I lived in New York. Every waiter, every janitor, um, every person in the service industry. So think of, again how we did, how we determine who is essential. Yes, <laughs> that entire population right now is affected. And now you know we are seeing you know a, hopefully a change, uh, some appreciation mm. for folks that we thought were unskilled, um, right. how vital they are, and yeah. how interconnected we are, and. Um, our ecosystem of between the haves and the have-nots, right. who's important, who's valuable, and who's not, yeah. um, it's kind of being upended right now. So it's it's stunning to see That's how right. all of this stuff is coming together. So stay home. If you're a teenager, 
who wants to see, have a sleepover with their friends, can't have it. Mom, that hairdresser you went to visit in a few weeks, she's not coming in. I'm sorry, mom, you're going yes. gray. So she's here not coming are some in. of the common things that you may not be reading about, you know, in your newspaper right. that we're hearing families talk about, you know, some of the drama. And we're going to bring all of this stuff up. Um, because th these are the, the real things that, that families right now are struggling with. Yeah. Um, ladies, you know, I, I get it. Like I need to have my eyebrows yep. done. Frankly, I like to have my eyelashes done. I, you know, I get a little, I'm, I'm 41. I get them a little sparkles yeah. here and there. You know, try, still trying to, I didn't notice, but that's okay. Sure. But you know what? Um, I can't go out. And frankly, if I did go out, nothing's open. There are folks that are, are coming into folks' homes right. to kind of provide those services. Um, but again, if that person is traveling to a bunch of different homes, like we've got to think about transmission. Right. Um, so I get it. You know, Tim, you're, you're talking about your mom. I'm talking about my mom here. She yeah. wants to bring a hairdresser in. I don't know where the hairdresser's been. She's done hair for 50 other people. And now she's going to come into my house with my mom and potentially get her sick. Sorry, mom. You're going gray. <laughs> It's okay. Now, no one's going to see you anyway because no one's leaving the house. Now, so it's that okay. That is good advice. It's however, great advice. However, um, it's the right that, advice. You know, Go ahead. I'm so pig headed. Go ahead. Oh my goodness. So stubborn sometimes. But there's also understanding, yep. you know, the emotion that goes along with sure. that. Ladies, like, you know, I don't know about you. If I don't get my eyebrows done, I, I start to feel bad about myself. I start to get a little depressed. And I know that sounds stupid, but that is the way of life. You know, if you have done something that is a habit that makes you feel good about yourself, sure. that is self-care, um, that is, you know, as stupid as ripping some hair out of your face and suddenly you can't do it anymore and you start to feel yep. you know, like you're not attractive, like that you're not, like there's a lot of emotion that, that comes totally. from that. So uh, I would suggest that perhaps instead of acting like a bulldozer over here and being mean to your mom and saying you're not doing that maybe maybe approach with a little compassion and say okay. listen i understand okay what can we do to mitigate some of that you know yeah I, it's it's a suggestion i think that's you. great um some hairdressers <laughs> while telling folks you know don't don't get desperate and start you know grabbing boxes of hair dye off the shelf yeah, um, yeah stay away from my shoe polish mom yeah <laughs> That's terrible. Um, I'll take that. Listen, I'll take the sign down. I'll take the sign oh, down. Gosh. Um, you know, some of the things that you can do, there are some hairdressers that are that are actually saying, we'll put together a little kit. We'll yep. send it to you with gloves, with some hair dye that we, we put together. Yep. Um, our friend um, Christine uh, Andrade here yep. in, in the city is actually doing that. I, I have to imagine that hairdressers Good. across the country are trying to see what we can do to give you a little touch up. Um, there are ways around it. Please, <coughs> like, be thoughtful, right. especially if you're, you know, in, you know, compromised yeah. and you're struggling. But, ladies, we get it. It's, it's. We're trying to figure this out too, and and hopefully, you know, we'll we'll come up with some innovative solutions together. You know, how we can overcome that. But um, approach it with some compassion. That's right. Be please. nice, people. Be nice. Be especially nice. Be nice to your mom. Be Hello. nice. That's right. Hello. Anyway. Anyway, more news for, for some today. more humanity, there's, there seems to be some humanity coming out of Washington here where the Senate uh, passed, and this will move on to the House, a $2 trillion stimulus package um, to help citizens. Uh, it's going to have direct payments to lower middle class income Americans, $1,200 per adult and $500 for each child. Uh, unemployment insurance is going to be extended for four months, uh, and the benefits are going to be increased by $600 weekly. Eligibility will expand it to cover more workers. Hopefully, again, those um, those essential workers that we're talking about now, the lowest paid workers are now the most essential. Go figure. Um, Democrats demanded and won a series of restraints on corporations. That's what was holding up the bill. Thank God. Sorry, I'm not being very biased today. It's early. Oh, uh, come on. It's You're early. supposed to be reporting it's the early. news. I'm sorry. No I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm still learning this here. Oh, parents um, taking on all kinds of new yeah. roles. But restraints on corporations that would benefit from loans and investments from the Treasury Department. Just so you know, uh, members of Congress, as well as the Trump business, cannot benefit from any of these loans. Just so you know. And, and honestly, like... Like a lot of this stuff is very complicated. Yep. Folks are frustrated saying, Washington, get your act together. We're in a crisis. People need money. They want to hold on to their homes. They want to be able to live. Yep. Um, like, do not understand the struggle what's happening here. 
but you know, you've got a group of people who are trying to ram through whatever, um, you know, that could have longer term consequences. You know, right now we shouldn't be giving bailouts and golden parachutes to, to CEOs. We should not. Um, and we need to make sure that our lowest income folks are taken care of. And frankly, we have to have a provision saying that Congress uh, and the White House are not going to benefit out of this package because the fact of the matter is, left to their own devices, we've seen what they do. Right. We have seen what they do. We had senators selling stock options and making money off of getting, you know, being privy to important yep. information that we didn't have as the general public. So, you know, if it takes a, a day or two longer to put some provisions in there to make sure that we, the families of the United States and, and people who are kind of on the lowest rungs of, of income are, are protected um, to make sure that fat cats are not taking advantage of the situation, then, you know, that's what we got to do right now. But we want to say that, again, all of this stuff is still in negotiation. Um, you have a Senate bill that has been approved, by, you know, has gotten the blessing from the White House, which who knows, because that can come and go. Right. You know, we'll see what happens there. But then there's an additional proposal from the House from Nancy Pelosi that's also being advanced um, with, again, a couple of new. Well, these are uh, the, these are real life things that affect people. A moratorium on mortgage payments, a moratorium on rent payments, a, mor a moratorium on car loans. Those are real life things that that will help out people. And so that's what, uh, you know, this other group, the Democrats, are actually fighting for right now. So that's where we're at loggerheads is the, you know, we have one bill, we have another bill. Um, you know, frankly, I think a mortgage moratorium, a rent moratorium, car payment moratorium right now. Because, because frankly, I don't know about you guys, but 1200 bucks, like that's... Whoa, that's life-changing. Yeah, that's, that's not life-changing. That's like... Twelve hundred bucks. Well, like, you, how far is that going to get you? But I mean, you get twelve hundred more bucks. You you, you 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 let me not pay my my mortgage for a while. Well, oh, on top that'll, of it, that'll that's help. One thing. That'll but help. if you're just throwing like as it is, the Senate proposal right now is just twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. But if I'm making nothing, yeah. if, if I just lost my job, and you're giving me twelve hundred dollars again, I'm banging that table because I'm getting so upset Please. and passionate. Um, twelve hundred bucks. I mean, what what does that cover? You yeah, get, you, you get two is, kids, you've got rent. Your rent is fifteen hundred. Who knows what it is? I mean, yesterday you were talking about you know back in the day, you know, living in in Jersey while working in Manhattan and pay you know a steal was eight fifty for an apartment for just you. Yeah, that was that was like twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. That was twenty years so ago. What are we even talking about twelve hundred dollars without a, a mortgage or rent moratorium? Like right. it just doesn't even make sense. It's crazy, and that's why it is so critically important that we as parents as families use our voices on the national level uh, to make sure we hold these folks accountable. Like yep. what life are you living right now that you think 1200 bucks is enough? Um, How about you live on 1200 bucks? Yeah. Well, I, I would luck. like to see some of these folks live on 1200 bucks. Like it's, it's insane. So that's why um, we, we got to wait a little bit. You know, we got to grind out these details. Yep. We got to demand details. And frankly, we have to speak up. Right. We're speaking up in our States. We're speaking up nationally. Um, I have been screaming. I'm walking around this house, you know, talking to reporters 24 seven, yeah, saying, yeah. hello, connect with reality. Um, you yeah. know, I, I was talking to a reporter yesterday, a, a national reporter, yeah. um, from a major publication. And I said, well, you know, some parents right now, they don't have childcare. They're forced to work. Some of these folks we're talking about in the low, low wage, uh, jobs that these formerly, uh, unskilled workers that are now like so essential that we were finally valuing them. But um, these folks still have to go to work. The schools are closed and you have parents for forced with, you know, should I leave my kindergarten first grader home alone? There's nobody to watch them. Right. You know, you can't, you, there's, there's no childcare. What do we do? And it had not even crossed the mind of some folks, you know, that, oh my God, what? like people are forced with that decision. Yeah. Well, what do you think is happening here? What do you think is happening? Why are we not talking about, like, we're so focused on putting additional pressure on parents and family, like, educate your child, manage right. your day, schedule your day, oh, my God. Right. Like, we're not having conversations about, right. you know, domestic violence, keeping the family right. healthy. You know, this is the fabric of society. You know, education and learning loss, it's a problem. Yes. Is it, is it the number one priority? No. Is keeping folks alive 
uh, making sure that we don't destroy family relationships, right. that we do not destroy the fabric of society, which are our families, our neighborhoods, our community. Right. Um, if we can get some learning in, I, a, a friend of ours was just talking about like, hey, yesterday school was watching BMX videos. <laughs> you know, like, Sounds good to me. That's hey, that's what got them. Gets my the attention. Day. And um, mm. you know, sometimes you know, that's what it is. But you know, I'm looking at some of the comments right now from some of our viewers. People with two kids at home and they lost both their jobs. You know. Praying for you guys. I can't imagine the amount of stress in that house, but that's what we're talking about. Families like that across the country that's going right. through that. And you're right. $1,200 doesn't do anything. Doesn't do it. That's we a joke. We need more and we need now. Right. So both that's of great. Those things. Um, in addition, uh, we're, we're going to be jumping to Mira in just a, just a moment to get her prepared parents tips of the day. That's right. Always appreciate. But before we do, Another issue we want to bring up um, that is of note that a lot of people, you know, now we're about a week, week and a half into quarantining is co-parenting during this situation. That's right. Because another thing that we're not talking about is the fact that, you know, the divorce rate in the United States is high. Yep. People are living in different kinds of families, yep. mixed families, you know, co-parenting with, with a former spouse, um, you know, mom and dad in different houses. Right. What happens? Like, what do you do during the situation? Right. Is there advice? Is there guidance? How do you handle this? Right. Well, let me give you some advice on that, Carrie. Since I co-parent, or what does Gwyneth Potter call it? Co, co-coupling. Do you Co you have decoupled? We have we have de we we decoupled quite a long time ago. Uh, we have an incredible relationship. Um, very blessed for that. Um, she lives on one side of Somerville. I live on the other side, and. We have a great relationship, but I'm not going to lie. Uh, the current events have have, you know, brought up some questions in my mind, and and all the all the uh, advice says the same thing. First of all, keep the normal routine as much as you can. So, if perfect example, I have them the second half of the week. They could come running through the studio in about five minutes. Um, keep those same days. Also, too, be flexible. Be flexible as well. Uh, people are very stressed out right now. They might need some time. You might have to juggle days. Try to be flexible and see the other po person's point of view. And most importantly, communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Parents are working at home right now. Um, they might be very, very busy. Maybe they need some time away from the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, and if two parents are home and you can do it, you know, maybe I can take them. Uh, maybe she can take them on other days. So communicate. Please be flexible. And like we always say, please be kind and understanding. And we're going to bring in some experts to talk about this, too. Um, you know, there there are folks starting to recognize that this can be an issue. Yes. You know, Tim, you are so blessed that you have kind of an open, positive relationship right. with your ex-wife. But so many folks don't. Um, you know, I am not currently in that situation. My ex-husband passed away this past summer. Uh, I can hear his voice in my head. He'd be like, you just keep them. Like right. I'm not homeschooling him or, or, or homeschooling them. Um, you know, you, you know, like we kind of had that dynamic right. going, but, and we were, we were also very positive. We had a great relationship together. Um, but you know, the, there are families that are struggling that, yes. you know, unfortunately have to have things like uh, supervised pickup and drop off right. supervised visits. So, Talking about that, acknowledging that that is something that right. parents and families are struggling with right now is something that we also have to dig in. Um, so, again, if you can, as we're kind of navigating this, keep it positive. I think Tim's yeah. advice was great. Um, Tim is also going to be starting um, some advice for dads. That's right. Starting um, tomorrow. Again, we're, we're hearing from families uh, what they need, what they want to talk about, right. things that they're struggling with. Um, things that may not be so obvious, things that aren't necessarily being directly communicated via a school district right. or a, a government entity, um, but things that we're trying to figure out. So right. we're going to try to figure this stuff out together. That's why we're here. Uh, the National Parents Union is That's run by for. parents. We are parents. Um, and we're here for you. So if you have suggestions, by all means, uh, put them in the chat box. We're seeing folks uh, react to us right now. Right. Um, you know, talking about, you know, what's important to them. Give us ideas, experts we need to have on. Um, so we're going to be bringing a lawyer on to talk yeah. about, you know, getting their best advice. Again, they can't give legal right. advice to everybody. I will tell you too that, just, you know, your agreement, just so people know this, your current custody agreement 
um, still um, still matters even during a pandemic. Yeah, and all those things are in line. It is essential that you can go get your child and bring him back to your home. I got a crash course on this the other night as I was reading this in my car. Yeah, um, because you know there there actually has been some advice handed down by family courts, at least here in Massachusetts, some other states as well, from the Supreme Judicial Court. Um, from official sources saying, like, yes, your custody agreement is still good. Yes. Um, your your shared parenting time should still happen. Yes. Um, that is essential. You That's can't right. travel to go and pick up your child. From Absolutely. The um, you should not withhold visitation. Nope. Um, you should be in conversation with your ex-spouse. That's right. Your ex-partner. Communicate. Um, communicate, communicate, communicate. Try to keep it cool. Um, there are also some emergency resources if... Um, if you feel like you are in a situation that must be addressed immediately, um, there are courts that are open that you can seek advice. There, there is information. So now that we know that that's important and we need to address it, uh, we're going to work. And so we're going to make sure that you have those resources. We're going to provide more information. But um, if you do have any other topics, any other questions about this, we want to get them. So put them in the chat box. Email us at info at npunion.org. Um, Danny will also put our email addresses up there. You can email That's us right. directly. We want to hear from you. That's right. Or if there's a guest who you think you might be an expert, you want to email Natasha at npunion.org. Uh, sorry, at Natasha at maparents.org if you'd yeah. like to be a guest as well. It might be. A, yeah, we don't want to overwhelm people I know, with I too know. many emails. Too much coffee addresses. today. Yes. Um, but we need it. That's uh, right. We, we both woke up tired today. And it's not from physical exertion. I think it's just from, you know, thinking so. Much. That's right. There's a lot. A lot going on, guys. There's a lot going on uh, between these two years and these two years, too. That's right. So, you know it. Uh, some of you may be feeling that as well. That's right. Uh, but let's jump into some of our guests today. And I'm actually excited. We have great guests uh, today. We have great guests throughout the week. Uh, but we're going to start off with Mira Brown, uh, who is from Prepared Parents, one of our favorites, always providing us with important facts and, and getting us started on our day. Mira, how are you this morning? We are good. Austin went to shelter in place as of, I think, midnight last night. And so we're, we're about a week behind everybody, everybody else. And so we, we did the run the Costco, find a loaf of bread if it even exists anymore. No toilet paper, you know, the, <laughs> where, where you all were probably a week ago. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's getting a little bit more real every day for, for families, at least in my back there in my community. Yeah, we're, we're finding that flour is actually yes. right now. We couldn't find flour either. We wanted to bake because the kids have taken this like interest in cooking and baking. And we did find dirt. We did we did get a thing of dirt at Costco so we could do some digging in the backyard. Yeah. It's it's sensory stuff. Yeah. Like I exactly. think that's part of exactly. that, you know. It's exactly. cookies, it's Play-Doh, it's just getting your hands into it. There's so much you can do with yep. it. So uh, if you can find flour, I would stock up. Yep. Um, rice was a, a precious commodity a couple of weeks ago. Now uh, it's all now over the place. Flour. Yeah, now rice is everywhere. Crazy. Uh, there's no rice here. Again, I think we're a week behind. <laughs> there's no no rice look, here. Look there's at a bodega because bodegas actually have, like we went into. <laughs> bodegas uh, and gas stations. Yes. Because yeah. no one thinks to look there. I got five boxes of rice at a gas yeah. station. Yeah. Well, there's a, um, out of you, I just saw a next door, which I think is like the other sort of survival app right now. But um, I just saw last night, late last night before going to bed, that there is an app that some like local UT, University of Texas, um, I don't know why I'm pointing out my window as if here's Texas. But anyway, the University <laughs> <laughs> University of Texas and Austin college students, I don't know if they're grad students, undergrad students, created a site where you can look for a product and see where in Austin has it. And, and I'm sure other cities have been doing that, but I'm going to be using that. that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. I mean, certainly it's for Austin, but um, I, I will let you guys... Where MIT? Yeah, right. If there was over, a window. Over there. Is that what's behind the curtain? So MIT is behind the curtain. So maybe those nerds uh, have come up with something. Erica Swallow, by the way, uh, who is watching us right now, she says that you can order uh, flour on Amazon. Um, I know that sounds dirty because we want to buy local, but that's where our friend bought it. No good rice on Amazon. 
though no rice in Springfield is what she says. Thank you so much, Erica. I will admit, um, I actually bought, I think, how much did I pay 60 bucks for a case of Goya rice? Because like, we, we have to have it. Like, so I, I, I paid about She loves that bucks. Goya rice, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves it, hello. Um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, and Eric is saying, thanks for the bodega tip. If folks have other tips, just ah. like, yeah, you know, we right. share. We are sharing right now, so we're doing the best that we can. Uh, Mira, how was your day yesterday? How's it going? Um, it was good, actually. We, um, I think we're we're finding we're finding our way uh, slowly. I think I mentioned that I do mornings, and and I, I am very lucky that my husband is home and he does afternoons. Um, but I think it's like come one p.m. I'm just like. Right with the two kids, and then like come five p.m., my husband's like, "Take the two-year-old," you know, and and so um, we we're doing we're doing our best basically. There was a lot of outdoor in the backyard, like I said, digging digging in the dirt, um, and I took always take miles my my miles for a run. I went for a run again, which felt good just to be outside. So. And we do. Mira, we both have a miles. Mine is two. Mira, I want to bring my miles up on the screen because um, okay. he asked me a very deep question. I want to get your advice on on how to how to how to answer questions because you know he's sure. he's a deep kid, and this is one of Miles' deep questions. I don't know if deep questions are coming up for you. Let's see if Daniel can put him on the screen. Um, he's so funny. Uh, we'll see. You know, maybe Daniel can get that up there, but. Um, one of his questions for me in the deep questions were, um, where is your soul? Like where in your body does your soul live? Um, was a mm. question he had asked me. Wow. And, um, That's deep. Yeah. And it's, it's a miles kind of question. Yeah. Know, it is like, a where, question. Yeah. Where does your soul exist in your body? Um, cause he is a, he's an expert on the human body, especially the digestive system <clears throat> loves the digestive system gets really mad when mommy forgets what's first, the small intestine or the large intestine. Um, oh. yeah, yeah, Miley right there. Uh, Miley asking the deep questions while eating some skitties there. Um, so again, like, these impossible I, answers. I, I don't expect you, Mira, to know. Um, I feel like I would answer that like heart and mind, right? Like your whole, your soul is in your heart and your mind. It's like the connect, I don't know, something yeah. That, that's a good question. My my son is definitely into the whys. Well, the two-year-old is in the why phase right now. Why? Why? Why, mommy? Why? And eventually, and that's a great question. And I well, love being a why guy. Tim I has a why guy. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, Max is like that. Yeah. Why, why, why? And I'm like, so I, I so right over here, I have a really thin driveway <laughs> I have to back out of every day. Yeah. And he just, he hits me with questions. <laughs> First thing in the morning, I'm like, dude, dude, you gotta just, just, just let me back up. <laughs> It's 7 15 in the morning just chill and when we get the street you can ask all the questions you want yeah. that's yeah. that's when that's when you get to leave the house now um, yeah you can have the trail of why i can have <laughs> questions all the time now why why why, why? why? which is wonderful because they're curious but it's just interesting yeah you it's know? great when you don't have the answer mira what do you what do you what do you say like you you offered a great answer your heart and your mind but like there are just some questions that mom and dad are not going to know like is there yeah. a go-to that you use and i know i'm putting you on the spot I didn't it's ask okay you. it's totally okay um i think there are two ways to do that so the first is to repeat the question back and i know that feels like a little bit of a cop-out but but it's actually not right and so asking them like where do you think the you know your your soul lives in in your body because it it is giving them the opportunity to sort of pause right and like think critically about a question that they've they've asked and sort of reflect on it themselves and certainly depending on your child you'll get different answers my kid with my six year old will look at me and be like no mommy where's the soul and you know like he would just ask <laughs> okay. um I know it's really smart though because honestly like I feel like at least for my kids. Half the time when they're asking me a question, um, they already know what they think. Yeah, it's it's in there, right? They just want some confirmation. So I think I, I actually think that's great advice. That's really wonderful. Yeah. 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 That would that would be how throw it back on the other 
Depending on the question, honestly, the other one is like seeking the answer together, right? You heard me last week, hey Siri, or on Google, but like getting here. Oh, my Siri, I have to stop doing that. My Siri keeps going. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I do that with Alexa. Um, and so, I'm, or Alexa, right? Whatever that go-to in your house is, is sort of being curious together. Um, we talked about curiosity last week is another great way to do it because I think it's okay that we don't know all the, you know, and that's a very deep spiritual sort of question. But I think there's other questions our kids answer that I'm just like, hey, buddy, you know what? That's a great question. What do you think? And if they don't, I don't know. Let's find out together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was trying to help Matthew figure out um, what the joints between your ribs and your breastbone were. Oh. That was a question that mm. came up in, in the packet, in, in the, one of the packets, the science packet from school. Uh, I, I, don't know, look at, like, I don't know the answer. Look, look <laughs> Yeah, so we had to Google it, and it's cartilage. Yeah, mm. it's cartilage. Go figure. Yeah, mm. that's what's between your 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 ribs and your breastbone. Cartilage, that's good. Cartilage. There you go. Yeah. Something new. Thank you for teaching me something new. <laughs> so, Mira, what's our yeah. what's our quick uh, tip for today? Yes, um, and so I will I will make this as quick as possible. Um, so everything so far, right, that we've shared from Prepared Parents and on PreparedForSuccess.org is about focusing during this moment on time, in time, excuse me, on what matters most to us. And so what I wanted to talk about today is actually the habits that matter most to us, the habits that we build, that we can build in our kids during this time when we're home together. Um, and specifically, I wanted to talk about uh, resilience. And so... And the reason being is, I, you know, we've talked a lot about all of these emotions that we're carrying, right? Negative emotions, positive emotions, good, bad, whatever you want to say, right? The, the, the um, frustration, the anger, the sadness, the not knowing what's, you know, coming next. Um, and so that's a lot to handle. And there's a lot of different ways to manage the stress of that. Um, but one of those ways is to continue to build resilience in, in our kids. And so, the tip of the, the day today is name up, name the habit, right? Name the habits that you're going to focus on um, as a family. And, and I'll explain what that means in a second, but let me just sort of explain what, what resilience is. Um, and so psychologists talk about resilience as being the process of adapting um, in the face of adversity, trauma, stress uncertainty right right now and the ability to actually bounce back um, from it and deal with that challenging situation and so a lot of people might confuse sort of perseverance and resilience and they're totally in interconnected and perseverance is part of that and i'm wondering if you guys could put up i sent you guys what we call the habits of ah, thank you, the habits of success um and i wanted to show this to you all because this has sort of been very grounding for me um, as a parent and certainly as an educator. And so this was created by Dr. Brooke Stafford um, Brizard from Turnaround for Children. And it's used by Summit with Summit Public Schools and it's used by thousands of, of students and teachers across the country. And these are the 16 habits of success that prepare you for school um, and, and for success in school, but also in, in life. And What's important about them is what, what I love calling them is power habits. And so they're used again, and, and they're power habits, right? Because you use them over and over and over again um, in life, like I said, to sort of succeed in different situations. And it, they're, they're sort of a pyramid because they build on top of each other, they're interconnected, and they reinforce each other. So you notice so far, right, we've talked about self-direction, we've talked about curiosity, we talked about ings and like finding your purpose, and today, um, I really wanted to talk about resilience. If you see it there sort of towards the top as a way to help us get through this situation, but also as something new um, and a habit we can sort of teach or nurture and develop in our kids during this really challenging situation. Um, and so let me talk to you a little bit about what resilience actually looks like. Um, and you can certainly keep sharing that or hey, I can see you guys again. Um, and so Resilience is essentially maintaining optimism, right? We've talked, you guys, I've heard you guys say that every morning. I love listening to you all that we have to maintain some optimism, even in challenging times, so we don't get off course, right? That's what we say certainly to our, to our kids and to our students, maintaining that. Avoiding and overcoming setbacks that come 
our way by certainly drawing on some of those other um, habits, but as a way, you know, how we deal with stress, how to regulate yourself, building relationships, growth mindset, right? All of drawing on those other habits as a way to avoid or overcome setbacks that come our way. And then when failure happens, because it, it will, um, things will not go the way we want them to go, how to respond to it and how to actually learn from failure and address it and again, bounce back, right? So that's what resilience is, looks like. Um, and so how do you actually do that as, as a parent? And so I think the first and most important thing is you name it. You talk about it with your kids. You name we're you know this is what resilience is. This is a really tough moment that we're all going through, um, and this is a habit that we're going to build together. Um, that is that we can use once we get past this moment, right? Past this moment in time. Talk about it, practice it, model it for you know for our kids. Um, and repetition and consistency is key. You know we've all heard you can't build a habit overnight. It takes time. Right, so don't expect it. I, you know, I, I just want to break down, like sometimes we get a little edu jargony and I, I want to break this down a little oh, bit yeah. for the average parent um, and, you know, what this actually looks like in practice. So I'm thinking about, um, you know, Matthew the other day was really, really struggling. Like he was just, again, with that question about, you know, what are the joints in between ribs and the breastbone called? What is that? And it wasn't in the packet. And he was just furious that he couldn't find the information. And he was really, you know, just, he starts to, you know, internalize, like, I'm so stupid. I can't figure this out. This isn't here. You know, they, they're they not giving me what I need and I, I can't get this done. And he knew he had to, if he wanted to get to the next preferred activity, mm -hmm. um, you know, he had to complete the packet. So he's really frustrated and feeling bad about himself. I'm just not smart and I, I don't get this. So what I try to do with him in that moment, you know, and it's not usually, you know, we're, we're not usually in an educational setting. I'm not usually helping him navigate right. Right. what the joints are. Um, but when he gets frustrated at home and feels like he doesn't have what he needs and he starts to beat himself up, I'm so stupid. I don't know how to do this. We stop right. and just kind of say, well, instead of going down the path of negativity and beating ourselves up, can we just say, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this and mm -hmm. ask for help. Can you, like, can we build the habit when we start to feel overwhelmed by not knowing something to stop and ask mom or, you know, stop and ask someone around you and, and just be able to articulate, like, I'm feeling like I don't have what I need or I'm not, uh, I'm not equipped, you know, so you don't have to internalize it and make you make yourself feel like you're stupid. You're not good at science. You're not you know, smart enough, all of this stuff. But instead, building a habit of I'm going to stop and ask for help. And then together we figure out, OK, what's the next course of action? Can we Google it? Can mom Google it with you? Mm -hmm. can you all of that. Especially so, now where everyone's learning at home and it's a safe place and you can stop and do that. Whereas if you were in a yeah. classroom, kids might yeah. be able to, try to do that. And I think that's, I mean, I think you couldn't have said it, thank you, better. Um, I, I think that's exactly right. I think it's taking those moments to pause, name the emotion, name the feeling, but then also name, like you said, the habit or the strategy, right? What is the tool? What is the thing that our kids can do in that moment just a little bit differently? And letting them know that that's not indicative, how they're feeling and that emotion, that behavior is not indicative of who they are right? It's not indicative of their identity or how smart they are, right? And that is a little bit of growth mindset, right? And we didn't talk about that, but that that's exactly, so when I say just like name it and talk about it, that's exactly right. Or even in myself, sometimes I pause myself, like I'll say something out loud without even realizing, right? In front of my kids, without even realizing I'm saying it out loud, yeah. God, Mara, you know, you X, right? Whatever you adjective you want to put in. And like, don't be such an idiot or whatever it might be. And I have to pause and say, you know what, buddy? Like that actually wasn't what I should have said, right? In the moment, right? What mommy was talking about is I'm really struggling right now and I'm not sure what to do next or I'm not sure how to handle that situation. And so what I need to work on instead is, right? And I'll talk to him, right? That's the modeling it. That's the practicing it. That's just using the words because, you know, we've said kids, especially little kids, they hear everything. 
Um, and with older kids, you can certainly go deeper into that, right, into that conversation. And that's where some of the other tools that we've talked about around, you know, hey, buddy, let's use this self-structured learning. Let's use a cycle. Let's let's may set a goal together. Let's think differently about that or whatever it might be come and play. But something just talking about it and naming it for kids is super helpful to them. Mira, thank you so much for joining us again this morning from Prepared Parents. Thank you so much. website as always. Thank you, preparedforsuccess.org. I appreciate it. That's wonderful. Mira, thank you so much, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow morning. Bye, Bye, guys. Mira Brown joining us from Austin, Texas. And uh, now we go to another part of the country. We're joined by Robert Ruiz, who is from uh, Oklahoma City. Yes. We're just outside. We'll get specific because right. um, I, I, I don't think he's – I know his organization is in Oklahoma City, but That's he's right. out there now. Robert, where are you right now? You're just outside, right? Right now, uh, I, yes, I'm in Norman. So Norman's uh, in the metro area. Uh, we're a suburb of Oklahoma City, but our office is in Oklahoma City, uh, and we do work statewide here in Oklahoma. Of course, it's not a huge state. Uh, you know, we have about 4 million people here, uh, two major metropolitan areas, which are Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So we do a lot of work in between those two metropolitan areas and in rural Oklahoma as well. Uh, just, you know, parents have different needs uh, all throughout the state. And so, uh, yeah, we're just happy to serve wherever we can. Wonderful. And your dear friend, uh, Colleen Cook, is actually wishing you a good morning and uh, just so happy you are representing Oklahoma. Oklahoma being well represented on the National Parents Union Live uh, Facebook Live. Uh, this week, and we're so excited that you're with us. Yeah. Uh, your work is so important, Robert, um, and we see it all over the place. You're the president of the Scissor Tail Community Development Corporation, um, just an incredible leader in the community. You're doing rapid response across Oklahoma, providing information. Uh, we want to start out, you know, and it's really important to us that we um, we just check in. And, and see how things are going for you as a human being, how things are going in your community. So uh, you're a dad and you're, you're really, you're, you're in the struggle with the rest of us. So how are things going for you right now? And how, how is your family? Well, first, I just, want to, I just want to say something about this $2 trillion. That's a lot of money. I mean, I, you know, to put it in scope, if you were to divide $2 trillion by 330 million people, which is the population of the United States, that's six thousand dollars per person. Mm. For a family of four, that's twenty-four thousand dollars. I mean, I know a lot of times we don't think about the scope of this. I know there's a lot of other sectors and a lot of other industries, but imagine, you know, the kind of impact that money could have on a family of four. Exactly, uh, just got it to the families. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think so often we don't, you know, uh, we think about all these other things, and and uh, sometimes the best thing is just to put it in the hands of the people. And so, uh, so especially thinking about the scope of this kind of uh, a stimulus package. Um, but, but anyways, uh, it, you know, us being a family of six, of course, that would be a huge, a huge impact. So we have four children, uh, four uh, Latino children, uh, three, uh, three daughters and one son. Uh, they are beautiful. Uh, they're wonderful. Um, they've grown up very quickly before our eyes. Our oldest is now 20. Um, we have an 18 year old senior, uh, 16 year old and a 14 year old. So kind of just every two, two years. Uh, so yeah, it's been challenging, but you know, we've been very blessed. Um, uh, yeah, we, we've experienced, uh, uh, you know, different things. My oldest daughter just lost her job, you know, as a, gra as a graphic designer, um, you know, our, uh, 18 year old is a senior this year. So there's a lot of uncertainty about what graduation looks like for her. Um, also, you know, she works at a, at a restaurant, uh, in the retail side. So, um, so hours are non-existent for her. Um, uh, yeah, so there's just a lot of issues, you know, both of them are also musicians. Um, and, uh, my son also does engineering work with us off sound engineering work. He's our 16 year old. And so now that, you know, as musicians, all of our contracts have been uh, canceled for March and April. Uh, that has a big impact on them and a lot of other musicians as well. So, yeah, you know, just personally, we're dealing with a lot. But at the same time, we're just still very grateful uh, for the blessings that we have, uh, for the work that we're doing. Um, yes, trying to keep people updated here in Oklahoma. In fact, we have a state school board meeting scheduled here uh, in about 45 minutes, which we will be tracking uh, very closely and we'll be keeping our parents informed. 
We've already kind of given them a preview about what that's going to look like. And so uh, just making sure that our parents have as much time as possible to plan for their families, to plan uh, daycare, to plan, you know, just, uh, you know, whatever can help them uh, in this big time of uncertainty. The more information that they have, the more uh, their anxiety can kind of lower because a lot of the anxiety is about just the uncertainty of it all. Uh, so no, if there's any way that we can help. I, I think that's so important. There's so much I want to get into with you, and I'm, I'm so glad we're having this conversation. Um, let's start with information dissemination and just getting the word out to the people, which is something that you and I do every single day and something that uh, we know is broken in so many of our systems. We've known it for a long time. That's why um, folks like you and I do the work that we do is because we know that, that folks just are not getting the information they need to be able to advocate for their kids, to stand up, policies implemented on us, not with us. Um, and unfortunately, this is yet another circumstance where, where a lot of this is happening. So I, I want to ask you about that. And, and frankly, this is a conversation I am having with our commissioner here in Massachusetts. Um, we're hearing that superintendents are being briefed about the process, the decision making, when we're finally going to call school for the year, uh, if that's going to happen. Uh, you know, what is what is happening with 180 day school requirement, like all of that. Mm -hmm. And it seems like a lot of the information um, is being discussed, is being transmitted to superintendents, to uh, elected officials. Um, but we're not being included in that process. Uh, how is it going for you? How are you navigating that? I, I'm, I'm hearing you say like you're, you guys are on top of that. How has it been for you? And, and do, you, do you find that that's just like very bizarre in this moment that we're not being constantly briefed and updated by these folks in terms of um, you know, what's going to be happening with our children? It just seems absurd in this moment that we wouldn't be, even if the answer is we're not sure or we're thinking about this, like that's important information we need to have. Yeah, but that's, an, yeah that, that's an extremely important question to be asking because we've taken it for granted for so long that we don't have a voice in our child's education um, that we just we take it for face value that, you know, well, whenever they make a decision, then we'll find out, you know, um, where uh, where that's exactly the right question. Shouldn't we be a part of this decision? Shouldn't we be a part of these deliberations? Um, you know, I took it for granted for a long time that also uh just people in oklahoma parents were receiving the, the same kind of information that i was and so when whenever we started getting i guess in a little bit different position where um you know power respects power right that's one of the principles that we work with here uh, in oklahoma and so as we started gaining power as an organization uh started having a little bit more of a seat at the table a little bit more access to information uh one of the most important things that we can do for our families is keeping them informed, uh, making sure that once we hear something, to let them know what's going on, uh, to make sure to be very transparent in that as well, to let them know sometimes that these may not be final decisions. So some of the information that we're hearing uh, can, could be proposals or recommendations. Uh, and so we try to make people aware of what stage that is, where that information is coming from, um, what is going to lead up to, uh, fi you know, finalizing those decisions. Uh, so all of those things are extremely important, you know, and our strategy uh, as an organization, it's informing parents and then it's organizing parents. So, but you can't organize parents without first informing them. So uh, it's just extremely uh, important to our work. Um, and we're just trying to grow our access and, uh, and actually through growing our relationships with more and more parents, uh, through more and more parents becoming leaders on their own um, by, you know, really putting parents in front of our organization, we have been able to build, build power and thus build access. And so we want to make sure that as we get that access to make sure that all of our parents are informed and are engaged and involved as, as much as possible. And that work can't stop now. Uh, just because we can't meet in person, it cannot stop now. Now more than ever, it is critically important that parents are at the table. Um, you know, again, just going back, I, I love superintendents. I know they got a tough job, but uh, we are all superintendents now. You know, we are the superintendents of our own homes. And so when you talk about preparation and who needs to be prepared for a potential school closure, a, a potential school opening, 
a transition for our children. Um, that's why I think it's critically important that we be at the table because now um, school is very different and who's responsible for education includes parents now more than ever. Um, so I am hoping that, you know, your parents, you know, I can see that you are fighting to be in the mix. Um, and I can see that parent groups across the nation are fighting to be in the mix because we need to be an important part of this conversation, not just for our context, um, but to make sure that folks understand what it is that we need. Uh, I don't know about you, I've seen some pretty absurd uh, resources and solutions uh, being pushed down on parents that, you know, just are well-intentioned but ridiculous um, yeah. and not, not helpful. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about, like, what are you guys doing to organize right now? How are you making sure your parents are informed? Uh, how are you making sure they get that information? Uh, we know in Massachusetts, we've always been kind of non-traditional in terms of how we communicate. Facebook Live has always been a part of us. We have WhatsApp groups. We have text chains. Uh, like, any means necessary, we are getting after parents and we're meeting them where they are. Uh, I, I have to assume that you say, take the same approach. We are parents. We understand how parents communicate and, and how some of the traditional channels used by school districts don't often work. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys are doing? Yeah, it's tough. You know, as community organizers, we're always taught that, you know, there's no replacement for one on one work. Uh, there's no replacement for being uh, in front of somebody uh you know in person and so that's hard you know the you know finding other avenues to stay engaged to uh keep building relationships uh keep people uh, involved and so you know one fun thing we did uh earlier this week is that we had a netflix party with some of our parents and we watched miss virginia together and yeah, so that was our friend nice. virginia walden ford and her her big movie that's all over the place now we were excited to see that yeah, that was really nice. It was it was a really great experience. Uh, you know, uh, we were chatting the whole time, um, and you know, it was nice to see people's their reactions and and such a great experience that we're we're probably going to do that again. Uh, we'll probably do something later on in the evening, maybe at eight thirty p.m. time time frame. Uh, we did this first one in the afternoon, and so uh, so that was a great experience. Uh, we're all, we're looking for other avenues to have uh, you know have conversations with parents. Uh, of course, you know, doing the Facebook Live thing is is uh, one way. You know, we sometimes get comments while we're doing that. Um, but the interaction is, you know, it's 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 not the same, but it, but at least it's something. You know, we can't stop in this during this time. Uh, there's a lot going on, and 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 you know, at the same time, there there are parents who are concerned with other things beyond education as well, and so we always have to be cognizant of that. Um, but 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 also uh, make sure that we are continuing in our mission to be, you know, here with support for parents. Uh, sometimes that's resources outside of school. And so, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, some great schools here in Oklahoma uh, that are doing uh, great work feeding in our community while uh, all these things are going on. And so, um, so yeah, keeping parents engaged is, is, is going to be an ongoing challenge. I think as a community, uh, uh, you know, with the National Parent Union, as much as we can share uh best practices and ideas uh th that's going to be helpful for uh, you know everybody on the communities we serve yeah I, I think it's critically important that when we find something that's working in a state that we all share it and say <laughs> hey um you know if we're dropping off a week's worth of food at the bus stop uh that that is working in detroit so that folks don't have to get on public transportation or get out to a school to go and pick something up um like we should share that with folks and maybe um, one of the ideas too is the, the packets that have been um you know sometimes sent out in some states in some states you got to go pick them up like including them with the week's worth of food that we're dropping off at the bus stop using yeah. the existing transportation system um and and maybe parking so that they're Wi-Fi hotspots, um, utilizing public access and taking over some of those government channels to help parents actually understand how to use these technological resources that are now being thrown at them. Uh, because not everybody knows how to set up a Chromebook and a, and a hotspot. Uh, even this guy over here <laughs> was struggling with it as well. I did it though. Yeah, he did it though. It was like, it was a challenge though. And um but you know, all of you know, we've got to we've got to meet people where where 
we are. We've got to share these resources. And, you know, some of us are, are kind of good at, at getting folks to focus on the existing common sense infrastructure that we have. Um, that's what we can do as parents is actually provide them feedback and say, hey, 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 you're not you're, you're not thinking about like the entire uh, context of a family, what we're capable of. You're setting really high, weird expectations for us that we're instantaneously going to turn into teachers. And frankly, you need to hear from us. So the work you're yeah. doing is so incredibly valuable. Yeah, and checking in with people is extremely valuable too. I mean, you know, we talk about Facebook Live, we talk about some of these, uh, you know, uh, broader tools, uh, but just, you know, the value of a text message or, uh, you know, just a phone call. I mean, those one-on-one, -on -one, that one-on-one -on -one work can still continue and can be very powerful. Even during this this uh, this time, we've seen parents be effective because uh, at the state school board level, we've been able to preserve at least some of the online learning that's going on some of the distance learning uh, uh, possibilities, uh, whereas we could have easily gone the route of our neighbor and just, you know, uh, shut down schools for the rest of the school year. Uh, luckily, that's not going to happen. And so even during this crisis, parents are still able to have a voice, um, but they have to be able to ask the right questions and, and have to be engaged. And uh, so that's that's all extremely important. Um, while we have you, I've got three quick questions before we let you go. Um, sure. Number one, I want to make sure that as we speak as a national organization, that the voice of Oklahoma parents, um, Latino parents are in the mix while we advocate for what we need to hear and see in the stimulus and in the conversations happening amongst our, local, our, our national organizations, the folks in Washington. We're doing everything that we possibly can to make sure that um, you know all leaders are heard that, yeah, and that our voice as the National Parents Union is in the mix to make sure that you know our priorities are are actually you know dis discussed and considered. So I, I want to ask you about what is currently being proposed in the stimulus, and you got into it a little bit earlier, but um, I want to give you a chance here. So you know, folks, right now talking about uh, a twelve hundred dollar payment. Uh, you know, I don't know what, what good that does without a mortgage, rent, car payment, moratorium as well. How do you see this? You know, if you had the chance to talk to Donald Trump, uh, Nancy Pelosi, and all the, the powers that be in Washington right now, what do you need to see in the stimulus? What do Oklahoma families need right now more than anything? Well, I'm a big fan of putting the money in the people's hands. You know, um, that's why I kind of mentioned that off, you know, right off the bat. Uh, you know, this is a, a huge package and, and sometimes we don't do the calculations, but uh, like I said earlier, $6,000 per person. This is poor per person. This is not uh, just adults. You know, if you were to divide, you know, $2, two trillion by our population, that's $6,000 per person. So imagine that impact that that could have those dollars were going directly to families. Uh, and of course, you know, we all know that that helps then boost the economies from there. Uh, now I know people can't get out still, and you know uh, things like that. And and they, but but people are losing their jobs. You know, uh, people are not able to uh, you know uh, have their livelihoods right now. And so more than anything, I think that the that individual people need to be supported uh, as much as possible. Um, of course, I am a small business owner as well. Um, you know, our our. Uh, a small business has been basically put on hold. We are very blessed that we have, you know, very little overhead and very little debt. And we're, but we, there are a lot of other small businesses that are not in that position that have, um, you know, rents to pay, that have uh, loans to pay. And so, uh, you know, definitely help is needed there as well. And so, you know, not taking away from the other sectors or industries, but just trying to give a scope of what that means. So when we're talking about $1,200 per adult, um, you know, that's that's kind of a drop in the bucket. Uh, and I think you've uh, you've already touched on that. Um, but I would definitely love to see more support for our families during this time. All right. Next rapid fire question for you. Um, as a dad, you know, you mentioned your kids, you know, they're certainly going through it. And, you know, the the stress that we feel, you know, hopefully, you know, you get to our age, hopefully, you know, you have some coping skills, you realize, OK, you know, this is a crazy situation. We're going to get through it. Times have been bad before. They'll get better, you know. But when you're a teenager, like your whole life is your senior year. Your whole life is your friends, is school. 
and it yeah. feels like life has been ripped away. And, you know, yeah. I can see it. My kids are younger, you know, not having, you know, not seeing Mrs. Dowling every morning for a first grader um, is heartbreaking because the love between a first grader and a teacher is, is all encompassing. Those friends that you make, it's, it's your whole world. It's the same for our older kids. So what are, you, what are you saying to your daughter right now? What are you saying to your sons right now just to, well, to get them through this? What's your dad advice? Yeah, we, you know, I, I can't imagine what they're going through. And I, and I and I let them know that. I mean, our, our experience growing up was very different. You know, here in Oklahoma, we didn't have a full school year last year because of a teacher walkout. And now, you know, the, the our, our students are again out of school. Um, and then that's exacerbated by the fact that we have a senior in the household that has worked so hard to get to where she's at. Um, you know, we didn't, you know, she's had such great success and we're so proud of her, um, you know, and then for her to be looking forward to this uh, for all of this time uh, to graduating, to uh, walking down with her cap and gown and, and having that experience. Um, I, I really just can't imagine what she's going through. So, and so for, first of all, to understand that they have feelings about all these things, uh, trying to find a new normal, uh, to be empathetic about what's going on with our children, uh, ask, asking them questions as well uh, to kind of understand where they're at. Um, and then at the same time, living life. I mean, you know, uh, being here at home, uh, we're trying to do a lot of cooking. Uh, we're playing games together. Uh, you know, in the evenings, we're breaking out the Xbox and the party games and, you know, playing Overcooked and, you know, we've been having some fun watching movies, you know, doing those sorts of things. Um, but but at the same time, be, you know, just really being understanding, uh, being here for our children, um, understand that they're going through a lot that that we can't necessarily understand. Um, you know, it's hard to walk in their shoes when we didn't have the same kind of experience. Um, and so um, so, yeah, you know, I think all of those things as a parent, as a as a father uh, are extremely important. Um, and, you know, feeling those questions, you know, and just being there, uh, listening, uh, a lot of times listening is just all they need. You know, we, we really can't solve their problems right now. Um, and you know, neither, neither should we always be seeking to solve our children's problems, especially uh, when they're getting to this age. Um, but sometimes listening is the best thing we can do for, for our children, uh, for our students. Um, and then, you know, uh, having them just explore how they're feeling about this and uh, what their, th their thoughts are. So, mm -hmm. final question for you. Um, you know, we, we shared before we, we hopped on here, you and I are both musicians. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got to say, I, I don't perform anymore, but music is such a, a part of my soul. You know, I was a percussionist my whole life. Um, it's, it was my savior in getting through, you know, childhood trauma was music is everything to me. And it's, it's such an emotional expression of who I am and how I process things. And, um, you know, it was interesting. I had a very emotional reaction. It was like a grief reaction. Um, you know, we had planned to go there, like music is, you know, just going and seeing bands, going and seeing music, uh, all different kinds of music, all different places. It's, it's such an important part of my life. Yeah. And when I realized that over the next few months, you know, all of the music I won't see, you know, and I, I, I started to cry. I was actually, I was, I was, I couldn't control it. Just thinking about like how I had looked forward to this emotional release as a, as a musician and my connection and my, how important that is to me as yeah. a human being and, and being disconnected from that. Um, as a musician, you know, how are you dealing with that? And and can you just talk a little bit about how you feel, you know, in this moment? And, you know, we're, we're all kind of seeing how important that, that, that these aspects of our lives actually are when they're, they're suddenly taken from us. So how, how are you dealing with that? Music is also a, a huge form of therapy for us. Uh, you know, I went through cancer five years ago um, and the really the only way I made it through that experience was still being able to perform. So even if I had to show up to a performance in a wheelchair, uh, I couldn't sing because, you know, the, the treatments were a throat, it was a throat cancer. Um, and so being a singer and a musician, 
um, that was hard not being able to sing and, and participate in that way. But not being able to go the, out there and perform um, would have just, I mean, I don't know how I would have made it through the experience if I didn't have that, uh, that outlet. And so blessed to be able to play with my wife. My wife is also uh, not only a musician, but she's basically our manager. Not basically. Why am I saying basically? She's our manager. She's our boss. And, uh, and you know, the blessing of having now our two oldest uh, children playing with us as well. Uh, they both play violin and our mariachi. And so, uh, and then just the interaction we have with our community, you know, uh, being a mariachi uh, in our community, um, you know, we're at some of the most important events of people's lives and, and we play a big role, uh, you know, in our culture. And so uh, just having those connections with people um, are so extremely important to us. And so then all of a sudden for that to just cease um, has been hard. Uh, and so we're thinking, uh, how do we still connect with people? Is there a way for us to stream live performances and take requests uh, to try to bring some sort of happiness to people, uh, still be able to connect as artists and musicians to people? Uh, because it, it, it leaves a big void in your life when, you know, or in my life, at least when, when, uh, when I, we're not able to do that. And so we're trying to think of uh, creative ways to be able to uh, still give people access to uh, the art and to the music. Um, I used to be a salsero also uh, before the cancer. Uh, the salsa was a, was a lot of work, especially a lot of equipment. Mariachi is a little easier. You just show up and play. So, um, but, uh, but, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll uh, get back to salsa. But uh, for now, it's just, it's all mariachi. We're starting to get a request here. Will is asking you to belt out a, a quick line of El Rey. For <laughs> it's funny because, you know, the first line of that song is that, you know, uh, about being outside. So, you know, <laughs> we, can't sing, we can't sing about that right now, right? My goodness. Well, <laughs> if you decide to do it online, uh, we would love to carry it too, um, because I yeah. think you know, that connection and yeah. you know, figuring out how we can do it and connect folks with with your beautiful art, um, you know, gives us hope in our hearts. You know, and and uh, for for folks who, that haven't experienced mariachi before, it would be a wonderful, enriching experience, but. Um, I think you're so right. I mean, it, it has such a connection in our lives. And I'm thinking about my grandfather just before he passed. Um, I, I had a band come in and, and sing to him because that's what he wanted. And yeah. it, he cried the whole time. And it was an emotional experience because it was like the last time when he was going to experience that. Oh, yeah. um, and it's so important to us. We just don't realize. I'm getting emotional thinking about it right now. Um, Robert, thank you so much for being with us and all of the work that you're doing across Oklahoma right now um, in all different facets of, of trying to, you know, keep parents going, advocating for our kids. I know we went over time, but uh, I'm just so grateful that you spent this time with us. And uh, I, let's let's have you back. I want I want updates on what's happening. We need your context. Uh, we're going to go and fight for the things that we, that you just talked about that you're fighting for in Oklahoma. Um, and we're just so grateful for your work. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, Robert Ruiz uh, joining us, and uh, he's he's just outside Oklahoma City. Um, and so we are are very grateful that he joined us today, and um, we're very grateful for all of you for joining us. Um, uh, all across the country, joining us for MPU Live, a longer edition today. Tim's a long, but, but definitely worth it. Yes. Definitely worth it. It's okay. Uh, and again, thanks for all the comments. Thanks for uh, Will Morrison jumping on there, Vivette Dukes, Erica Swallow for the advice, Christina Rivera, everyone who's everyone who everyone who jumped on and gave feedback. Now, all the listeners, all the uh, the audience here, if you could do me a favor, you have a task. You get some homework because you're home and nothing else to do, right? Share this or tag a friend, one friend. That's all you have to do, just one, who might get something out of this show. That's right. We need to spread the word. We'd love to have more folks interacting with us. Uh, we're sharing it. We, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have seen the broadcast uh, since we started about a week yes. and a half ago. But uh, we want to make sure that anybody who could use a little fun, a little information, a little parent community is, is seeing us and interacting please. with us. So um, please share. 
please, please share. And, and Robert Ruiz is actually putting up El Rey <laughs> on YouTube. And we will be posting uh, that yes, on the will. National We're Parents Union page. Everyone. We will make sure everyone sees that. Please tune in tomorrow for our guest, uh, Alicia Green. Yes, our, that's my homegirl. I'm so excited about Alicia Green. Okay, that I you, you can't miss it. It's going to be so exciting. You want to talk about arts and culture and keeping connected. That's right. Disrupting spaces. This is this That's right. Is she's the one. World. Yeah, she's she the is one. actually the assistant principal of the Boston Ballet. There you go. Um, she does community outreach. We have she is a co-conspirator and Ooh. she is here to help us That's get great. connected to the arts. Places you've never been before, you've never seen before, we're going to talk to her about. That's great. And uh, we'll have, uh, on Friday, we'll have Teshfair Cosby of Kip School. very excited about that as well. She, she Talk about another homegirl. I know. From New Jersey. I know. She is helping to build the National Parents Union. That's right. And so we're so excited. We're so excited. That's right. Again, I'm going to go and uh, help Patty Langan right now with her groceries. <laughs> okay. That's right. And again, thank you for another wonderful episode. Thanks have a nice day. Thanks for being day. with us. We'll see you tomorrow.